Imagine that you're a high school debater and you're walking into your debate round to find out that a self-proclaimed Marxist-Leninist Maoist is judging you, who openly stated that she would never let a student win if they made an argument defending Israel or capitalism. That's a reality for many students because the National Speech and Debate Association won't take action. They won't condemn Lila for her bias or barred her from judging students. And so they perpetuate students being judged not on their merit, but how they can confirm their judge's bias. It's important to recognize that debate is not about winning an argument. It's about making sure everyone feels okay and making sure everyone feels safe. So when that's hindered upon, I think that's when debate becomes essentially useless in the first place. So it was really, really eye-opening to see those passionate RFDs given by the judges to see that debate really doesn't matter about the IMF, like who cares? Like what matters is like those people who need to be safe within the round itself. High school debate is so incredibly hijacked to the point where now students are completely throwing out the assigned topic at hand to debate what they think is the most important debate in the country, the treatment of trans students in debate rounds. They further this by saying that the point of debate is not to argue. No, it's to make sure that everyone feels safe and okay. They even go on to say that it's sad when students lose debate rounds solely based off of their debating skills and not their identity. One of the students stated that voting for them is joining the protests. I know who I'm not voting for. All right, guys. So we got to talk about the state of high school education in this country, right? Which, you know, is in a state of disaster. Uh, most kids can't read, write, or do basic math. And the kids that can read, write, and do basic math, they're overwhelmingly woke, right? Even these so-called smart kids, right? The kids that are smart enough to be on a debate team, okay? Because this video right here that I'm going to show you guys is probably one of the most unhinged videos I've ever watched in my life. But again, it is uh, a representation of what kids are being taught in school and the indoctrination that has happened in school, especially when it comes to this issue of race and identity politics, okay? These kids are being radicalized, so radicalized that they do not believe that they should have to face somebody on another team, on another debate team, that is white, right? Which is exactly what this one woke high school debater, who apparently is a top high school debater in, in the US, okay? Doing this debate competition, she's going to argue that the other team that she's going up against should actually lose because one of the team's members is white. Take a look. They have a white debater on their team, which inherently means they have more whiteness than us. We obviously know that JJ is not white. It's pretty obvious. Go down onto our pick. We give you three words why we subsume all of their protests and affirm their protests. In a pick, what it means is you are furthering their cause just minus the whiteness. As Rebecca is a vehicle for this movement, we say whiteness means really bad for representation and queer people, and it's a bad form of furthering this protest. The best way to further the protest is to vote for our pick and to affirm it, but minus the whiteness. They say that we're taking over. JJ's labor, but first, this is a new response. If they read this response before, we probably would have read a cap cam about how you can't like use labor across identity lines. That's a really bad thing to do. Second, how picks work is you affirm their protest. We're not taking over their labor. It's just a technicality of debate. Then they say that it's trans exclusion. No, couple responses that they dropped from Sanji. One, our constructive speech was about personal experiences, about our identity. We are not comfortable discussing our sexuality on a live stream with 130 people. Second, we say that like um, them telling us how we should represent our advocacy feeds into our link about racism because a white person and someone on a white team should never be telling two women of color how they should be furthering their advocacy that's an independent link into our whiteness argument that gets dropped you can drop them right now they say we should have read things about the, about the hall of shame it's an identity k we are not trans debaters we don't, don't want to do that also they don't put anything about women of color or queer women of color in their case which means they also link it to the exclusion there's no independent offense off of this then at the bottom all these stuff about the louisville project their racist rhetoric and using the black labor as a way to further their advocacy is inherently racist as an independent reason to drop them. They say JJ wrote the argument, but no, Rebecca is a vehicle of the movement. You should never use a white person who is saying the Louisville Project and using it as an example of their advocacy in order to further a movement. Then using black suffering to advance at the tournament is just a bad thing to do. Then they say that, oh, um, that, that 
it's just an example. A white person just shouldn't use a black person's suffering as an example of their advocacy. That's inherently a racist thing to do. And it's too late to respond to this argument in final focus. And it's the largest dropped argument. There's also another dropped argument that links it to racism about how they're telling us how to represent our advocacy. Yeah, so you seen that, you heard that. Okay, um, I know it was probably very difficult for the average person to keep up with what this woman was saying. Okay, it was pretty difficult for me to keep up with what she was saying. I had to watch it like five or six, seven times for me to understand exactly what she was arguing, which her main argument was that the other team, uh, basically the two uh, students at the top left, okay, the white girl and what appears to be an Asian boy or girl, I can't, I, I really don't know. Uh, essentially, because they have a white person on the team, that they cannot make certain arguments, right? That their arguments are invalid based off identity uh, rather than the argument itself, right? Basically, they don't have enough infinity stones of wokeness to make the arguments that they're making or to speak on certain topics and subjects. Now, again, this is the state of high school debate. This is what high school students are debating about, right? This is how they debate. It's not about the actual topic itself or any facts or logic. It's about identity. Well, you can't make X, Y, and Z argument because you ain't black, right? Or you ain't trans or you ain't gay or you ain't, you know, whatever identity box, right? And if, if you're white, right, there's a very limited amount of topics you can speak on. Otherwise, you're racist. But the irony here is that the real racist was this student who, again, is trying to uh, basically argue that the other team can't make an argument based off their race, right? Based off the color of their skin. And this is what is being taught in these high schools, guys, right? That's what's being pushed in these high school. This uh, debater, this, this girl that you guys saw that went on this unhinged rant, in 10 or 20 years, she's going to be some high school or college professor, right? She's going to be a college professor uh, teaching uh, this type of nonsense <laughs> to other kids, right? That's what she's going to be doing. And that is essentially the problem, right? This is the problem with high school and middle school education. It's not about facts. It's not about logic. It's not about reason. It's all about woke identity politics, right? Because ultimately in the day, a lot of these kids, uh, a lot of people that are running these organizations are communists, they're Marxists, and they're just using these organizations, these platforms to push their radical woke agenda, right? Which is exactly what's happening. That's exactly what's happening, okay? That That's not the only video from this tournament. There was also another video that has gone viral as well too in which they basically argue that, hey, I don't want to talk about the actual topic, which is the cost and benefits of the IMF. No, no, no. I'd much rather talk about how trans people are allegedly being genocided because that's way more important than the actual topic that we're supposed to debate. The clip I played is from the 1987 ACTA protest in New York City. It was not the first and certainly not the last demonstration of its kind. It joins a tradition of trans and queer protest against institutions and to re reform communities that are violent and exclusive. We are here to join this tradition in our own small way. So welcome to the protest. We are tired of how debate treats trans people. More than that, we are tired of the way that their treatment is normalized, how it is treated as a necessary byproduct of having good discourse. When a nationally ranked team is bold enough to read arguments and make trans people uncomfortable in front of an 11 person panel and not be called out for it, something needs to change. When a trans kid can go three years in debate believing being misgendered was simply something he needed to take in order to win ballots, something needs to change. When almost every trans person quits debate or considers quitting several times a month, several times a week, several times a day, something needs to change. Change. First, the framework. Status quo political discourse remains fixated on the notion of the child, symbol of a future society we must protect, bait in 12. Politicians universally frame their debaters around the question of what policies are best for children, who, keep, who keeps the child safest. Politics, however, supposedly radical, is simply the universal movement of submission to the ideal of the future, to preserve, maintain, and upgrade the structures of society and to proliferate them through for all the sake of the children. It is for this reason queerness finds itself missing from political discourse. Sound familiar? It should. Still having abstract policy debates in as violent and exclusionary a community as this constitutes something like reproductive futurism. They're obsessed with the continuation of a society for future 
future generations while ignoring violence that happens every day in spaces like this one. See, trans people know that scenario planning is planning for a future they don't have. They're too busy surviving to participate in that game. Baden 12, reproductive futurism, which demands that all social relationships be structured in order to allow for a possibility of the future, ensures that it's the sacrifice of all vital energy for the pure abstraction of the idealized continuation of society. Queerness must figure as being against the future itself. In the name of the future, any repression can be justified. This round is going to be a debate about debate. The button you're clicking does nothing to the IMF itself. Your choice instead is whether to affirm our performance. The role of the ballot is to vote for the team that constructs the best strategy for trans liberation in debate. Essentially, you are deciding, will you join the protest? Vincent 13, debate isn't of itself a performance. We must evaluate what a debater's performance does and justifies. Those with privilege in debate are never forced to have their performance attached to them. Their arguments are viewed as words on paper. Alt our alternative is to occupy the debate space until trans debaters can participate safely. Movements are only effective if they create material incentives for those in power to change by denying the community business as normal. TOC final is the TOC finals is the most important debate in the country. This round will be viewed by hundreds, if not thousands, of people. Your affirmation here is the ultimate disruption of the debate space. Ahmed 19 to open institutions up that have functioned as containers. You have to throw the usage into crisis. Protest requires becoming an inconvenience to make violence seemable. Sometimes you have to create a scene to stop business as usual, impossible to pass by. Occupation is a political product. You counter the violence of a system by revealing the violence of a system. We have tried politeness. We have tried blog posts and infographics and endless discussions. But the only way the debate community will change is if we hold their most sacred currency for ransom, ballots. We will occupy the debate space and deny business as usual until there is change. Show trans debaters, trans kids everywhere that they belong. Show them that they deserve to be here in TOC finals and in finals at every other tournament. Show them what this space can be. So I think in light of this, um, Marcus and I have decided to concede the round against Dalton. I think that their message that they've read throughout the entire tournament has been incredibly impactful. And by debating it, I don't think we want to undermine the message that they're trying to get across or try to tear down an argument just the sake of picking up a ballot. But rather, I think what's more important is to hold a conversation to discuss their messages and their experiences as well. So in light of everything, we think it's the most important thing in the round is to make sure people have a voice in the first place to get across their message. And there's no greater place to do that than TOC final. Yeah. So I want you guys to understand what just happened there, right? So remember at the beginning of this video, I showed you the video of the woke woman of color. I guess that's how you describe her girl of color, uh, essentially arguing <laughs> that the other team, which included the white girl liberal white woke white girl at the top left should lose the debate <laughs> because she's white right because she's not qualified to debate certain subjects and topics because she's white right now in this same kind of debate right the woke white woman argues that hey i'm actually not going to discuss the topic at hand which is about the imf we're not going to talk about that. I actually want to talk about trans issues, right? We're going to talk about trans issues. And I'm going to tell you what this debate is going to be about, right? The debate is going to be about the debate, right? We're going to debate the debate. And we're going to occupy this space until, quote, trans debaters can participate safely. Now, the other team immediately concedes, okay, because... They don't want to deny <laughs> the alleged trans genocide and they don't want to be labeled transphobic, <laughs> right? Oh, uh, it's just like, this is, this is crazy, right? This is absolute nonsense. These debates, right? I mean, we're talking about, again, top level debaters in the country, right? High school kids. They're not being judged on the arguments that they're making and the merits of the arguments, the facts, the logic, the reasoning behind it, right? None of that, right? The presentation, no, they're literally being judged based off wokeness, right? Who who has the most affinity stones of wokeness? Oh, you do, right? You win, you win, okay? And, and again, the arguments that they're making, again, is they're just to say, I, I don't wanna talk about this subject. I wanna talk about what I wanna talk about, right? I wanna talk about how trans people oppress and therefore I should win, right? I, I win because you can't argue against trans oppression or else you're bigot, right? And again, the woke high school students that, again, are engaging in the debate are refusing to push back against the argument because they don't want to be labeled as bigots.
It's shameful stuff, man. It really is. But again, this this is what happens in real life, though. This is what happens on CNN, on MSNBC, on these mainstream liberal outlets is that certain subjects, right? You cannot talk about it from a certain perspective. You can't be truthful about certain subjects or certain topics because people don't want to be labeled racist, bigots, homophobes, whatever, right? Again, th this is where it starts, right? It, it starts here. And then you see this, this ideology be reflected on a larger stage, right? Like, for example, you can't talk about crime and how, you know, hey, <laughs> the vast majority of crime is committed by a certain group of people unless you're racist, right? If you start really calling out crime and, like, you know, the culture behind it and, you know, the fact that it's being committed <laughs> by, you know, certain people, you know, uh, disproportionately more than others, you're racist, right? You're a bigot, okay? We have policies that are being made based off this same ideology, guys. These soft on crime policies are made based off the ideology that these high school students adhere to. And again, this is why Elon Musk talks about the woke mind virus being the biggest threat that we have to our society because you have these kids who are going to be future doctors, lawyers, engineers, scientists, politicians, you know, they're going to be future leaders. And this is how they think, right? This is how they think. This is how soft they are, right? No wonder, again, the country is headed in the direction that we're headed in. Because the leaders of our country, the future leaders of our country, some of the, the brightest minds <laughs> are the wokest minds, which apparently, you know, in today's society, uh, that doesn't mean that you, you should critically think and engage with arguments and subjects based off just merit, right? And facts, logic, and reasoning. No, no. You engage based off identity and wokeness, right? Everything's about identity and wokeness. Who's more oppressed? Whoever's more oppressed wins, right? They win. They get everything they want. Don't question those people. If you question them, you're, you you are uh, a bigot, right? Which is how we get these cuckoo for cocoa Puff policies that we get. Because, again, you can't question a certain group of people based off identity. You can't talk about certain subjects unless you are a certain identity, right? You can't speak on certain things unless you are the right skin color or you sleep with the right, you know, people or whether or not you like your genitalia, right? I mean, it, it, it really is silly. And videos like this are extremely concerning about the direction of this country because this is not stuff that these kids have learned on their own. It's stuff that they've been indoctrinated with in school. And that is why the fight for education and school choice is the biggest fight of our lifetime. It is the modern day civil rights movement for conservatives. It really is. School choice. Making sure that your kid is not indoctrinated like this. Because again, these kids, they learn this in school. They learn it in school. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.